live from the Export Beer Garden Studios and brought to you, as always, by Export Ultra. This is the Agenda Podcast for October the 2nd. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. Oh, g'day, James McConey. How are you? Uh, hey, G Lane. I'm good, thanks. Um, you know, good to be back in here. Uh, I noticed that Manaya is in the Middle East. Yes, he's with one his one place where you're not supposed to be right now. He's with his habibis, uh, and I don't know if you've seen him in his in his dish dash, which is the traditional Emirati uh, white cloak, um, and also the, the 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 headdress as well. Of he's been in Oman, and he did say the last time he was in the Middle East. Uh, They'd come up and speak Arabic to him and go, ah, Habibi, ah, kef halak Habibi. And he'd be like, ah, New Zealand? Because <laughs> he looks so, he looks like he belongs. What does Habibi mean? Friend. My ah. Love. My love, my love. Ah, habibi. Kef, kef halak, how are you, ah, Habibi? <laughs> Shit, you're good, g You're just throwing some there. Arabic down, right? I, I lived there for a while. I lived there yeah. for a long time. Assalamu alaikum, ali sakum salam, all that kind of carry on. Well, mostly when you go to a new place, the things that you absorb are the locations of the nearest pub. Yes. And then... Whatever liquids you're allowed to consume. Yeah. Well, that was pretty easy. And in the Middle East, it's basically every hotel. Every oh, hotel. yeah, because they don't actually have pubs, eh? There's no, drinking is banned except they turn a blind eye. Is that right? Well, hotels, basically the hotels are like a giant mall of bars. So you go in and there's a, a hotel bar, but then there's a rooftop bar. And then in the basement, there's an Irish bar. And then on the beach, there's a beach bar. And then they have a nightclub on the top floor as well. So every hotel right. in the Middle East has about five bars in it. So you can have a whole night in one hotel and just go from bar to bar. Um, so that's how they get around it. Because it's illegal to be drunk in public, intoxicated gotcha. in public. That's why they, they don't do any breath testing. This is dangerous for Westerners as well um, because they don't have breath testing because you shouldn't actually be drinking. So, uh, yeah. by theory, they shouldn't be. So, what happens is if you crash <laughs> and you've been you're drunk, you're fucked. You're pretty much you're done. Really? Uh, yeah. So you run for the hills at that stage. Maybe just get a taxi straight to the airport. They send you on Air Emirates economy <laughs> to yeah to, to the, wherever. Have you ever been invited to one of Jeremy Wells's white parties? No. Mm. Oh, I'm not white enough. Clearly. <laughs> 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 Who gets the nod for that? Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't been invited either, but rumour is that he had, he took a franchise of P. Diddy's white parties and he's been holding them in New Zealand for years. Oh, well, I yeah. know that he loves lube. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That, so, I mean, when I, as soon as they said the baby oil thing, I thought, oh, Jerry, Jerry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, well, neither of us have been invited, so uh, maybe we'll have to get Jeremy on to discuss his, his white parties. Can hey. I just say that I thought that dinner en blanc, whatever it was called, phase... Yes. I thought that was one of the wankiest things ever. Oh, the pop-up. The pop-up yeah, the pop-up dinner. dinners. Yeah. And everyone's wearing white. And I'm like, I would totally, I'll go down there in my cricket creams. Pants? But, so there's no way, I'm, I'm not wearing white pants. I'm not going out splashing out on a pair of white pants. Does anyone want to see my VPL down the waterfront? Yeah, I, I'm not. Down f- the viaduct, VPL on the viaduct. Were anyone you, keen? I think the, the greatest one of those white parties or those dinner en blanc which was basically... Oh, you went. No, no. <clears throat> no, I, I saw pictures um, from it, which is just a disguised P. Diddy party, really. Uh, just make it French and it's okay. But they, the pop-up was on the field at Eden Park, which mm. I thought was a bit lame. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, the whole thing is, uh, I think it's died to death now, is it? It has. It, it, it hasn't it, been around for It was just a little fad. But I, pre- no, I prefer dinner en noir. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, get you your black puffer out, yeah. which is what the <laughs> um, the national uniform is, because you could get everyone's probably got a black shirt of some kind, right? Like, oh, I, yeah, I think in other nations they probably think, oh no, maybe they, they wouldn't even have that, but Kiwis have definitely got black in the wardrobe. Oh, hundred percent they have. We'll just yeah. check out an All Blacks game. Yeah, everyone's exactly. You well, you got your, yeah. your merch. You've got a black yeah. caps top on right yeah. now, and then so whether you're any national team, you've got your merch, and then you've got your black puffer. Yep. And then generally, if, you've, if you're a funeral goer, yeah. you'll have, oh, especially if you're Māori, Adam will back me up on this, you'll have a black shirt because you're not always just wearing the jacket, but it is you have to wear black. Um, you have to. Is there, I mean, per capita, are we the biggest owners of black puffer jackets in the world per 100%. capita? 100%. Okay. I, I mean, I think a lot of people won't necessarily buy black straight away, whereas we look at it and go, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am. 
This is me. I'm I'm a Kiwi. I'm a Kiwi. This is, I live in Aotearoa. I'm wearing black. But even anything above taupo, for example, you'd probably go for the vest, the the puffer vest, as opposed to the full puffer jacket. Oh, are you talking the Alpha Dad puffer yeah. vest? Yeah, I'm you... talking. I'm talking finance bro. Yeah, uh, kind of. But finance bro jackets are a bit thinner. They're the thinner puffer jacket. They're the kind of yeah, they're the the the, the, the medium, yes. like the skinny. The skinny yeah. uh, piping or yeah. the skinny horizontal lines, skinny yeah. stitching. Yeah, I know that's that means you're not going full puffer. I've I've been sponsored by Mac Packet Crowd Goes Wild, so I've seen the full array of puffers. Yes, and I've I've got a Finance Bro um, Alpha Dad puffer. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, little um, it, and it's it does it is quite nice actually. But then you when you're out there in a vest, you do realise that you are you look giving, like a bit of a dick. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, um, speaking, of you, I've got my black caps. Uh, Top on. I should probably have my Black Cap supporters support group T-shirt on. Big news this morning, James McConey. Oh shit! What? Big news. Uh, Tim Southey um, has resigned from the Test captaincy um, at the end of the Sri Lankan tour, just before they fly out to India. And Tom Latham has been announced as the new captain. Tommy Tom Latham. He's yeah. been circling for a while. Oh yeah. And you called it years ago when he was circling around Kane Williamson. Yeah. Late thought- at night when you sent that. <laughs> sent that. <laughs> <laughs> Regrettable text. Sent that bombshell out on uh, Twitter. No one takes my text seriously. <laughs> one text, they're like, oh, <laughs> jump on this. And, I mean, yeah, I had heard something. But do you know what? In our line of work, G-Lane, I think, you know, because we're not right there in the mainstream media, we hold on to a lot of more bombshells. Yes. Like I know probably stories that will maybe come out next week. But I'm, I'm not going to break breaking news on Craig as well because no one gives a shit. It's like you're there to entertain us. We don't yeah. care about your scoops. So whereas that was the one time where I went, oh, this sounds a bit juicy. I'm like, <laughs> um, so like a Muppet. Question for you, James McConey. Uh, this happened in Sri Lanka. Do you think it happened in Gaul before they flew out to India? Mm. Do you think it happened in the exact same hotel room as the Ross Taylor sacking? Oh, wow, yes, exactly. I know what you're talking about yeah. there, when the, the shafting. Yeah, well, um, I mean, it's, it's something in the air. Yeah, well, exactly. That's the thing. Um, never go, Well, this is a weird thing, isn't it? I, I think Tim, just given his age, he, he, there's got to be um, a replacement happening some at some point. I, I'm picking it was going to be the end of the summer. Yeah, it that was. was yeah. It was going to be really – yeah. it was, it was going to happen anyway, but – Mentioning it mid tour, like he's being um, getting a slap on the wrist, I don't think that that's necessary. That's just my feeling. I reckon Tim, the sexy camel, has been a great servant. Just say to him, "Hey, mate, I think um, BT Dubs this is your last tour, but we'll let you go to the end of the tour yeah. and say, okay, that's it from me. Have have really loved um, taking over the team in this interim period, yeah. but it's time for Tom to lead. It would have been a classier way to do it. Yeah, is it? That- uh, and look, it's. Tom Latham's not exactly firing on all cylinders either. He hasn't scored a century in quite a few seasons. He's only averaging just under 35. He's it's, one of those batters that's getting to the fifth or sixth innings and then suddenly totally redeems himself. And so he's due for one and he's got to go and play India. So, And the press release came out this morning. Uh, Gary Stead uh, was obviously uh, the PR person, wrote all his quotes for him, which uh, I'll read them mm. out to you. Um, and, you know, we play cliche uh, assistant coach, cliche bingo, um, in all all black games and Super Rugby at halftime, yeah. this is a good. This is this one you'll be dinging all the way through. So Gary said, "said Tim's a fantastic player and a very good leader, who is held in high regard by the teams, by the players and support staff." Yeah, this, this is a good one. This is one. He's been a great servant of New Zealand cricket oh, shit. <laughs> over nearly seventeen years playing on the international stage, and I'd like to acknowledge his humility in stepping down from the role as team captain. Oh, right. It's not easy giving up on something you love, but Tim is a true team man and he's made the decision with the team's best interest at heart. He's one of our greatest ever players and we'll still very much see him playing a part in our test side moving forward. Do you reckon he's going to drop him for the next test? <laughs> for Matt Henry? Yeah, well, maybe that's what everybody's setting him up for. Yeah. Because uh, maybe that's why it has to be done because dropping your, your, yeah. your captain on tour is – Feels unprecedented, right? It does. That, that's probably why batters, um, even though they say, oh, it's better to have a, a batter as captain, there's no real reason apart from it's just tradition. Yeah, I guess it's also quite difficult as a as a bowling captain. It's always quite hard to win, to, 
take bring yourself on and take yourself off. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that's always a harder decision. I think that's why traditionally it's usually been batters or I know, keepers. I know that's a reason, but I, I, I mean, if your best tactician is a bowler, then there yeah, should true. be no Pat it, Cummins, for example. Yeah, it doesn't actually matter. That's why I was like, okay, yeah, it's tough because I think on those Indian tours we've had um, one seamer in some games, right? Yeah, and a part timer, yes. maybe a Daryl, a Daryl Mitchell. Um, yeah, maybe that's why they had to do it mid tour. It, it just feels like even the the Wagner. Um, Retirement was a bit muddy as well. well even the Gupta one was muddy as well. Yeah. Everyone, the, it seems the only one that went to plan was Ross Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else are fucked up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ross had a sort of pr- procession. He knew when he, when he was bowing out, they had a really nice day, wasn't it, with the family on yep. the field. And it was a beautiful thing. And his mum came out. Yeah, oh, yeah I know. Was... It was just so lovely. <clears throat> um, that was that was actually quite a, a, a really sort of moving moment, wasn't it? With yeah, Ross. But yeah. the other ones have seemed to have just gone a bit awry. But saying that, Tom Latham has <laughs> taken over the captaincy and are heading to India for three Test matches in Bangalore, Pune, and Wankhede Stadium. Uh, so he's up against language. It. Oh, yeah, it's, it's its name. I know that the the local commentators call it Wankhede, but all of the Western commentators are too scared to say Wankhede, so they say Wankhede. Oh, do really? They, they kind of lose the K and they go, Wahidi. And it's like, it's Wankiti. You hear the, the every other Indian commentator calls it Wankiti. So call it yeah, Wankiti. Yeah, exactly. It's, when you're in Wankiti, you go with the Wankiti. That's every, what, I mean, I can't see a problem with saying Wankiti. No. What's the word? Fuck is a man. Yeah. And um, there was a great piece of footage the other day of um, Peter Crouch, and uh, I think it was. We say country every day. Yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Um, Rio Ferdinand and it was it Peter Crouch? They were hosting a, a game from um, Wankdorf Stadium. Oh, and, young boys, young yeah, boys, young played boys. There. And uh, I think it was a Europa League game or something. And there was a, a female BBC One host there, and she goes, "All right, yo, welcome to. Okay, let's get this off your chest. Okay, yeah. we're going to do it once, and then we're going to move on." She goes, "Welcome to Wankdorf Stadium." And <laughs> Rio Ferdinand and, and the Peter Crouch go, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay, that's it. Let's move on. That's it. Uh, it was a great, great way to approach that. Um, but there's going to be more breakdown of this with Dylan Cleaver, um, Paul Ford, and oh, Jason Hoyt. Heavy hitters. Yeah, Cleaver's going to listen to that, the BYC podcast, which will be out this afternoon. Um, other cricket news. Um, we'll take a quick break, and I'll come back with a, a shocking statistic from um, Australian cricket uh, around Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark. James McConey, did you know that Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark so in the IPL, with their auction prices last year, uh, they each earned more money bowling two balls playing franchise cricket than for five days uh, of test cricket in the baggy green. Two balls. Really? <laughs> yeah. Who, who's this? So their franchise cricket, Pat Cummins and Mitchell Stark. Oh, my God. So all their franchise uh, contracts put together, they made more money bowling two balls <laughs> than... Five days of hard graft in right. the baggy green. So they did bowl more than two balls. Yeah. But, that, but, but just those the, two balls are worth more. X amount. Yeah. yeah. That shows that shows the power of that uh, short form form game. That's incredible. Eh? More than, they bowl two balls, they get the same amount of money the, as. The weird thing about T20 um, international cricket, and let's not get lost in the weeds on this, G Lane, but um, that's the format that all the smaller nations have to play. Like if you're a minnow nation, like Samoa won that qualification tournament in the Pacific. Recently, yeah. it's a T Twenty tournament. Yeah. So there's no way they're not even allowed to play fifty over one dayers. So if you are a great Test bowler from Samoa or Papua New Guinea, stiff shit, <laughs> you're playing T Twenty and that is it. <laughs> yeah. Because there's no Test for you. So the ICC, I think there's twelve nations. Are they the that are allowed to play Tests? Ten or twelve, whatever. Um, Afghanistan's the latest one to be yes. to be able to play. Ireland, can they? I don't know. Anyway. I think Ireland have played, yeah, yeah. Anyway, everyone else, no, no dice. Whereas I sort of think there needs to be a pathway for the minnows to say, if you're the best test nation of the minnows, yeah. and you come through and you've got a reasonable team, why not? Because I think Samoa, with Dion Nash's son bowling, <laughs> and um, is it Solia who plays for uh, Auckland? He's, yep. he's in there as well. I'm like batting. It's like, yeah, you could have a good test team there. I think the issue with that is five days of test cricket. Most of these, most of these players are amateur professional. Can't take five days off work to go and play a test match. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> I know. There's no way. There's yeah. no way they can. Yeah, they, 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 that would just blow the budget. But anyway, um, 
Yeah, I should say Solomon Nash. I shouldn't just call him Dion Nash's son. Sol, yeah. Nash. Yeah, I saw him play actually in the, in the November five-day test match up in Cobham Oval. Oh, right. Last year, and he tore them apart. Yeah. And he bowls so much like Dion Nash. Yeah. Like the tight little kind of way he drifts off the wicket and everything. Yeah. Good batter too. Good yeah, batter. he can bat. He can bat. So was that the Seddon Park lads uh, having to face up to him? Yeah. Oh, so no. He, he was playing for the November 11, I think. I think they might have. Maybe they might have recruited him. For, <laughs> the Seddon boys had to go. Yeah. They're thinking this is going to be fun. Seddon Cricket Club versus November 11. That's happening again, actually, in November. Um, playing, been played at St. Paul's. Oh, there we um, go. And we're playing a, a T20 match against the Chiefs. So you're going to have to come down and. Um, I will. You have to umpire. come down. You, who are you going to rev? I can't umpire. You're going to have to play for us. It's the ACC versus the Chiefs. You know what happens whenever I play for you? I blow a calf. Oh, I, I don't think it's do. just us. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll blow a calf umpiring. Yeah, like, come possibly. On. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, that's going to be that, when, that. What's the date? That one is a Friday. I think it's Friday the maybe 21st of oh, November. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. I'll let you yeah. know about that. But um, the five-day test match is happening at, at, at St. Paul's Collegiate. November versus – it only lasts three days. Mm. It's a bunch of old battlers, and they, they basically – they'd like to think they could play five days, but it never goes five days. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, some rugby news, James McConey. Uh, Justin Bieber. James O'Connor. James O'Connor is rumoured to be in talks with the Crusaders uh, to fill their first five role, given that last year the Crusaders had five, they chose five, first five eights throughout the season. Rivers, Ray Hanna, Taha, Kimara, David Havili, Riley Hohepa and Fergus Burke all played first five. And now they've <laughs> approached the 34-year-old Justin Bieber. Well, one thing I would say is, I like all those first fives they, they, they tried, those options. Yeah. Obviously, Fergus Burke being the one that got away. He's with Saracens now. Um, I do notice that there's no Tasman names in that list. I mean, you are the Crusaders region. What's wrong with the guys who won, won the Ranfurly Shield the other day? One of the first fives kicked his 55-metre goal to win it. Is Willie, is Willie Havili the first five? Willie Havili is yeah. one. Well, he's with, um, he's with Moana. Moana. But there isn't. there are a couple that play in that squad who are pretty good, including the guy who came on and kicked that winning goal. So all, all I'm saying is, like, the lack of Tasman first fives, let's not count um, David Havili because he's only just filled in there once, I think, yeah, or twice, is a little bit glaring for me. If you are a true regional team, what's wrong with your, what's wrong with your Tassie boys? Are, we, are, we, are Super Rugby's truly regional teams, though? Well, they get them from anywhere, right? But yeah. I just think that, you know, that they've played to a high level. Tassie, Tasman have won... Uh, the MPC recently, they've won the Shield. I don't think they've ever finished lower than fifth or sixth. Yeah. They're bloody good. Um, there must be some first fives coming out of Nelson College. Surely. There's a good one with a mullet coming out right now, but he's probably too young. The thing is, I think people overthink first five. Can I go into, into a little bit of a first five rant? I'll, I'll just look at it. Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is a tough position, but it's actually probably – if you've got the skills, it's probably one of the easier positions to play. As, it's just, as a former first five? Yeah, because you get to kick, you get to pass, um, not under that much pressure either. You got, and you've got forward pods there looking after you, either giving you the ball, sort of a back ball like yep. now, so you, get, you start your back line further away from the defence. It's like, I think it's a pretty cool position. Um, and if you've got a fullback who kicks, or a second five who kicks, they take all that pressure off you. If you've got a... Um, a uh, halfback who loves to kick box, then that's yeah. another uh, percentage of your kick. So even your exit plays aren't your problem half the time. I'm like going, so you just want someone who talks a lot and passes. I mean, come on. If, and then, then you're looking for the personality yeah. that you need. One thing the other day on the breakdown, Isaac Boss said Cam Roygaard, he, he coached him as a junior with the Waikato schools teams yeah. or whatever, he said he was a really good first five as well, even though he plays halfback. And I thought that's actually quite interesting because – what happens if Cortez and um, Noah Hotham yeah. are as good as what we think they're going to be, and you got three halfbacks? I mean, why doesn't Cam quite a big unit? A very a big unit. I sat next to him on the plane. Yeah, he's not small. No. Why doesn't Cam shuffle out to first five and give another option? Anyway, this is just first five chat. There you go. Oh, great first five chat. But um, I always wondered with Bieber. Yeah, he's been around forever. <laughs> he's he's only thirty four. Justin Bieber, but the reason we call him Bieber is because he—I didn't realise he—he debuted in Super Rugby as a 17-year-old. I know he was so young. Yeah. Perth, um, he was with the Western Force. Yeah. They did a story on him, like where he was sort of going to the school ball and then coming and out and playing for um, 
Western Force. It was crazy, really, just that how he moved so young. Yeah, I didn't. Re- I didn't quite realize he debuted as a seventeen-year-old and became the second youngest ever Wallaby later that year. He looks so young as well. I mean, like back then, he looks like a different person now. Yeah, he does. He doesn't like, look like Justin Bieber. He looks like a very weathered Justin Bieber. Yeah. So, he, and then <laughs> Biebs is probably can relate, right? But the other thing is, like, if you look at Carter Young and Carter when he retired, not too much difference. Yeah, you're right. But. I tell you, I tell you who Bieber. looks. I tell you who looks different from starting to retirement, and that is open side flankers. Sam you look, Kane. <laughs> Sam Kane and Richie McCaw. You look at them both; they look so fresh faced. And by the mm. end of it, uh, Conrad Smith was the same. Conrad yeah. Smith, when he started, was quite a good looking, dashing young lawyer. <laughs> by the end of it, his he looked, his face was like a welder's bench. It had been knocked around so much. Yeah. <laughs> He got he got so good by the end as well, I reckon, because even when he came in, he was just definitely the, the gliding player who set up his outsides. But then by the end, he just was just one of the most important people on the team. He threw a big um, hissy fit, I think, in that Rugby World Cup final 2015 when he got sub for Sonny Bill. Oh. Because he, he played a bloody good first half. Yeah. I think he set up near here, did that sort of half volley off the ground and, yeah. and set up a try. Anyway, um, yeah, apparently he was like, yeah, he was livid. Don't blame him. I didn't also realise that I'm, I'm getting shocked by Bieber constantly. I didn't realise both his parents are Kiwis and he's got a New Zealand passport. Yes, Te Aratu Peninsula. He's yeah. from my neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he is. So we, we, we produced a player which we love to hate for many years. Yeah. Many, many years. And same with um, who's the one that was born out of um, Tokoro? Uh, Wade Cooper. Wade Cooper. The two people that New Zealand rugby fans love to hate the most were born in New Zealand. Yeah, they're ours. <laughs> they're ours. It's our fault. Um, I I was forced to rewatch that Hong Kong test where oh. um, where Beaver kind of um, blotted his copybook and you know flushed his to- his career down the toilet. Well, Ted did, and um, Beaver was bloody good in that in that last um, that last play. But also, why are you putting making Kevin Mialamu a hooker? Possibly played the whole game. I'm not sure. But anyway, mark up against Beebs, mm. a 19 year old, just. Full of snapper, they're full of beans. Yeah, young, and it was young like, thruster. There's no, yeah, exactly. You just skinned him and just scored that try, and then it all came back to to Beaver. But also, um, in that same game, Dan Carter missed a shocker of a tackle on Adam Ashley Cooper um, that led in a try. But no one remembers that because when you're when you're goat status, yeah, you can do what the hell you want. That's right, and when yeah. you, and then when you're Beaver status, yeah, it's which like he was everything, at that time. <laughs> everything. What are we doing that for? What are you doing that for? It's like, nah. Oh, very good. Hey, um, we've also got the Snacker Changi Sports Scholarship running at the moment. We're binge watching as a sport. Um, just enter to text CHIP to 3236, follow the link, uh, fill out the deets, and we'll send you the Snacker Changi Sports Scholarship prize pack, which is basically made up of big nuts, loads of big nuts. Have you tried the big cashew oh, nuts? I love Lee Hart's big nuts. Oh. I've always wanted to try them. Do you like his salty big nuts or his salt and vinegar nuts? No, I, did the, did his, I tried his barbecue nuts. Ooh. I think they were in here. You brought them oh, yeah. in. <laughs> I prefer the salt and vinegar nuts. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The salty nuts. Yeah, I well. love his, the salted ones, the salted with a little bit of vinegar on it. Oh, I say vinegar and salt nuts, actually. Um, a bunch of snack of changies. We'll say um, some refreshments. Uh, G Lane. As well, yeah. Uh, it feels like you're wrapping up the pod, but I just wanted to ask you, Bledisloe low too. I mean, you were in here commentating. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you have any, any thoughts on, um, on, on who did well and who might go on the Northern Tour or might not? I... I'm so relieved that Wallace Side Teddy played so well because I was, was I was so worried when he got selected in South Africa at six. I was like, fucking hell, he's 22, he could get he could get creamed here, yeah. and he might not recover from this. And then he played really well, and then started again. And I'm so glad he's played well because I was worried because I love him so much. Yeah, <laughs> he, I, was, I was worried that it, that this much pressure this early out of position because I prefer him at eight as a running number eight. Um, I thought he was like. Outstanding. Yeah, he Outstanding. was the player of the, the day. D, D, D. D. And um, he was by far um, best in show. Definitely um, just every game he's improved and looks quite home at six as yeah. well. Like you say, it's kind of – it's the biggest hospital pass. Quite often they've been – I remember Victor Vito playing a test at six, at maybe at the G or the indoor stadium in Melbourne. Yeah. Missed his tackle on the blind side, honestly. Yeah. Talk back callers. <laughs> Straight into him, exactly, and it's like, what's he doing? Blah blah blah, and I'm like, oh my god, one blindside move, yeah, that you miss your your assignment, 
It was just fury. And I thought, I just didn't want that to happen to Wallace, same as you, but the, he, he was great. I think the, the one thing I've, I've noticed is that um, watching ALB, he played almost a full game, I think. Yeah. Um, just he, he he is a, He's a steady the ship guy. Oh, he is a so steady the ship. Runs it straight yeah. and hard. Do it's, we need a cap for ALB? A what? A what? Oh, we need a cap, like a, a cap. hat. Oh, yeah. We need some – but he does run it straight. He straightens the line. He does all those little things that – I mean, sometimes I think that we're, we're, like, we're blessed because we've got Geordie, who I think you need the Udon. He, he's, he's your number 12. And then with 13 – You stick ALB there. Well, I love Rico. So that's the thing. The problem is would Rico consider going out into the, uh, onto the wing again? Is he quick enough? Is he quick enough these days? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. I, don't know. I thought also Cody's 8%. Cody Taylor, he's yeah. getting better and better. I think as he he's gets been older. the best player of the season, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, oh, fuck, he's good. Um, I thought Will Jordan looks great at fullback. Um, it's great to have him back in the side every time he got the ball. Um, Clark, uh, Chu Clark, oh. Caleb Clark, the new nickname we've got from Jabba the Butt, is, formerly known as, has been retired. We have a new name thanks to <laughs> Caitlin, who's a, um, I think young Caitlin, because it was a dad that texted in saying his daughter Caitlin came up with Chu Clarker. And I think that's going to take off. I don't know if he's going to be more happy with Chu Clarker. I don't know if he's going to be more happy with that. Anyway, go back to the other question around the Northern Tour. Is the Northern Tour, is it a chance to then blood new players into next season? For example, will TJ Pedernata go? Will they send Cam Roygaard and Sneakers and Hotham? I think Roygaard hasn't played enough rugby. I think TJ will go. Do you think? Cam Roygaard can play in the New Zealand 15 or whatever that's going yep. to be touring as well. So um, I, I'm wondering about a, a guy like Peter Larkai as well. Like what do you – this Northern Tour looks too tough because you've got England, Ireland, France, and then Italy at the end. So 2-2? Two, two? Is he no. out? No. I don't he's think gone. He's gonna, I don't think he's going to make it. So, okay, what about – let's look at um, other positions. So Sam Kane, he's off to Japan for three years. Yep. Do you bother taking him on the Northern yes, Tour? Yes, hundred okay. percent. Because okay. you've got you've lost so much leadership over the past year with you know Captain Caveman's gone, Aaron Smith, all that sort of stuff. Or does Peter Luckey come in and they well, say, Sam, thanks very much. Here's your hundredth cap. You go off to Japan next year. Can Luckey go NZ15 for half the tour and then and then do a bit of a switcheroo, come so over? So what's the what's the New Zealand 15 tour? Sorry, what's is that um, running at the same time? I don't know. In other parts of Europe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So they've got two squads over there, which they can. It's yeah. quite clever, isn't it? It is quite clever. Yeah. So they'll be able to do that. I don't think there'll be any any um, any great changes, really. I think that game, by beating the Wallabies by 20 points there at the end, pretty much locks in a lot of people. But one player who I think has probably made the, the greatest strides this year, apart from Wallace Atiti, who's like the yeah. bolter of bolters, is Tupo Vai. Yeah. Because now... The mahi monster. When he... The mahi monster trying to get out off the ground. <laughs> when... Um, when... Uh, when he plays now, I notice that when he gets named or when he's talked about, everyone goes, oh, obviously we've got Tupo Vai, whereas before, I'd even even at the start of the season, people are, you know, there's some people who are non-Chiefs fans yes. would have been rolling their eyes at Tupo Vai. Oh, yeah. And now, yes, oh, God. And now you look at him and it's, go back in the highlights, he's often the first receiver. He's got those silky skills. Yeah. Plus he's the clean-out king. He just goes for people, and, and got, I, I love him. You got Sam Derry as well, and you got Dog Roll. So I think the locks wise, yeah, we're good yeah. because old P- Paddy Toops is back. Oh, Toops is back yeah. as well. He played. He, well, he came off the bench. He played. I thought he played outstandingly in the last 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, he just brought a. He just brought a, some sort of mana and presence. When proper he was big out there. man, big proper, man vibes. Proper big man. Um, same with um, Tossi. Pos- Tossi. Basilio Tossi. Tossi. Just a big unit. <laughs> just, I love the fact we've got two. Massive 140 kg plus yeah, units yeah. now into Mighty Williams and him because I always I'm always jealous when I see the Springboks and even Argentina and England and everything. These they bring out these absolute yeah. monsters, um, but they don't look as big in a black jersey. You know that? I always think that when the Springboks come out, I don't know if that's their cut of their jersey or the English with their white jerseys. Well, black is slimming jersey. Yeah, I know. Why do you think I'm wearing it today? <laughs> I know. But I think we need to change jerseys then because it doesn't look as intimidating. No. It, <laughs> you don't want to have you don't your look moves. As you don't have your moves. That's why we lost in those light grey jerseys. 
People, every player with moves was very self conscious in, in <laughs> Cardiff. You would have noticed it. It's a confidence thing, isn't it? It's a confidence thing. You send you out there with light grey, it shows every single sweat ring, it shows every single curve. Especially when moves. you're sweating under your moves. Love That's handles some, yeah. and moves yeah. on full display in Cardiff 2007. That is the reason we lost. Let's own it. Great it's way. wardrobe choice. Great way to uh, end the podcast. Well, um, see you later. Tomorrow is the return of the Habibi himself. Uh, Manaya Stewart, he'll oh. be in bits and pieces tomorrow. Uh, I guarantee you, if he extended his holiday after the Beer Garden Tour, I'm sure he looked after himself and, and convalesced. Well, Manaya is one of the few people who pushes that, you know, the um, the cabin crew button? Oh, yes. Like, before they've even taken off, he's pushed that button, Ding. and it's all for beers. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, speaking of um, Star Wars, often after one of these trips, he comes back looking like Emperor Palpatine. Oh, the eyes. <laughs> the eyes. The yeah. eyes have gone. The, smoking too many dairies, crushing too many beers. So um, the return of Emperor Palpatine tomorrow. See you later. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda podcast, brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.